series of deliberate and deadly terrorist acts. Several shots were fired as President Kennedy's motorcade passed through downtown Dallas. None of us will ever forget this day. Yet we go forward to defend freedom and all that is good and just in our world. Just say again, please. Oh, you're coming out of power. And not what your country can do for you. And what you Welcome to the Hagman Daily Show, weekdays 2 to 3 p.m. Eastern Time. And now your hosts, Joe Hagman and John Robertson. Hello and welcome to this Monday, 14th, Monday, May 14th, 2018 edition of the Hagman Daily Show. Sorry, that took me a minute there. Uh, We are so glad to be here today. A whole lot to get into. We got a huge, historic day in this country as the president has moved officially the embassy of the United States of America to Israel in Jerusalem from its former place in Tel Aviv, recognizing the capital of Israel, really for the first time, uh, what many other presidents had promised in the past, but never followed through with President Trump has delivered. And there was a, uh, a some great optics and, and audio coming out of Israel with Netanyahu praising uh, President Trump for this historic, as he said, um, uh, day of history and for his amazing leadership or real leadership, I should say, I should say. And we see a lot of violence now uh, as the body count in Gaza continues to rise. It's up to 43, as many as 1,700 more injured in these protests. And John, um, I don't know. I haven't, I've only watched a few clips. I've read a, a number of articles, though, about what's happening with these protests, but not a good situation over there. And you made a comment off air about the rest of the day and week to expect a uh, terror attacks and other things to happen, as we've already seen one terror attack in Israel thwarted as they attempted to uh, uh, ambush an Israeli military position. Uh, three uh, perpetrators were killed. But what do you think about, you watch some of the live streaming press conference from Jerusalem. What did you think about that, John? Well, Joe, today is truly a historic day. And regardless of one's eschatology or beliefs regarding uh, Bible prophecy writ large, today is a day that we should not only mark on uh, our calendar of significant events for the uh, first administration of President Donald Trump or You could even extrapolate that to the history of the United States of America, but you can even extrapolate it further to the history of humankind going all the way back to the moment that God stood on the mountaintop with Abram and, you know, swept his arm out and said, this land will be for my chosen people, for the Jews, and you will be the father of the Jews. And from that moment on, of course, Abram became father Abraham. The, the father of the Jews and the petrofamilia of the God that we serve. We always say the God of who? Of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Those names are given because they are in genealogical order, but they're also given in lineage of importance with the uh, original covenant. So a, a, a historic day, and it is a day that will not be without blowback. Uh, the, the, Op-eds will come fast and furious. The fake stream media will jump all over this, misconstrue it to be everything from racist to homophobe to sexist to capitalist to any other ist they can come up with, except communist, because that's, of course, what they are. But uh, we will see blowback. Uh, Joe, I would say more than any other event in my lifetime, it is a certainty that the Arab contingent uh, that proclaimed death to Israel and have since the diaspora was concluded in 1947-48 with the the refounding of Israel and President Truman's immediate, within, what, 15 minutes, his acknowledging of Israel as the new modern nation-state of Israel – 
you know, it brings to mind a powerful word image. And we saw to a degree, Joe, a conclusion to this historic moment today. And that, of course, is when, and I forget his name, I apologize, but but there was a rabbi uh, in the Oval Office with President Truman who placed his hands on either of President Truman's cheeks. And he said, truly, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob placed you in your mother's womb for this moment of this day. And we know, Joe, from the Bible that Jerusalem is the capital of Israel. Politics aside, if you believe the Bible is the inerrant word of God, Jerusalem is the capital of Israel. Now, my opening statement aside, I'll hand it back to you with this. Even in our community, Joe, I'm sorry to say, there will be many who dissent and who scream about the Jewish deep state, Jewish Zionism, Mossad, Shin Bet, etc., and will try to negate the profundity of this day. And that's sad. Well, John, that's very well said. And if we go on to the Drudge Report, we can read a number of headlines of what is exactly to expect, or at least what is being said from the uh, Al Qaeda terror group calling for jihad, Iran urging for uh, global resistance over what they call this illegal move by Trump moving the embassy to Israel. Uh, to Jerusalem, I'm sorry, and we see uh, a drogan of Turkey, President of Turkey, also says USA has lost its mediator role because of this decision. It can no longer be a mediator because it is now too invested. I don't know how this changes anything, really. Uh, you're talking about just recognizing the rightful capital of a country, and as many others have said, it's the right of that country, uh, sovereign nation, to choose its own capital, and because of the uh, w what they call the world calls historical claims by Christian Jews and Islam to Jerusalem. But the only claim Islam has to Jerusalem is through conquest. That has historically been the Jewish people's holy land for millennia. I mean, we, we've talked about this at length, that Israel was not a nation, but sustained as a people for almost 2,000 years while they had no nation from 70 AD to 1948. But they have the right to, to choose their own you know, capital. And, and it's crazy to me that the United States and former presidents from Bush to Obama to Clinton all recognized the same thing that President Trump just acted upon. So when you see this media coverage of, uh, you know, them, the, the media and those on the left tearing President Trump down for this decision, it's the same thing that they praised Obama for. So. It's all, you know, just uh, any of this negative media coverage about the actual decision is it's all just, uh, you know, smoke and mirrors in an attempt to discredit the president. What really should be focused on also is the, uh, you know, the, these protests. What's going on with these protests? There's a lot of people injured. There's a lot of people dead. And how do we mitigate that? That's what I'm more interested in. Uh, not so much. I mean, it, it is a historical day, as you said, John, and it. Uh, prophetically if anything what does it mean that's another uh, question that we need to to uh, talk about oh absolutely i mean look to, to put this in perspective you and i were not alive in post-world war ii world where the as i said a moment ago the diaspora <clears throat> the dispersing of god's people to the four corners of the earth occurred and then it was concluded with the founding of the modern nation state of Israel. We weren't around then, but that was a significant calendar date in biblical, in Bible prophecy. And, and I think 99% of, uh, of the ministers, researchers, writers, speakers, et cetera, who deal with Bible prophecy agree on that. That's one thing that I think the entire community can agree on today. Joe is another one of those, those markers. If, if the Lord chooses to tarry, and we are here for another several generations, uh, then, then those who follow us, people who are using whatever uh, IT technology, whatever platforms are available in 2060, 2070, 2080 uh, to do what we do today, uh, they will note today as, as incredibly significant calendar-wise. Now, as you said, there will be blowback. There will be there will there will be Arab response to this, not just oh, Palestinian, but John, but the Arab people as a whole. You know what we missed? You know what is you know why this date was chosen? Today is actually 
to the day, the 70th anniversary when Jerusalem was founded, when Israel was founded as a nation. On May 14th, 1948, the day before the expiration of the British mandate, David Ben Gurion, the head of the Jewish agency, declared the establishment of a Jewish state, Eretz Israel, to be known as the State of Israel, May 14th, 1948. So that's yep. pretty fascinating. You know, there's something that we should touch on today. Uh, actually, there's a couple things that are that my mind is spinning in a couple different directions, but it's all it's all Jerusalem centric. First of all, excuse me, there is a there is a, a an argument going around our community that because the United Nations was founded on Rockefeller former slaughterhouse property, it's 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 um unblemished so we go back to the, let me let me try to draw this into a linear thought pattern here book of Le, the book of leviticus is is replete with examples of how sacrifices in the temple are to occur uh, down to the 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 uh the unblemished bullock the uh the white feather fowl etc cetera, etc cetera. and it's very specific the united nations building in new york city was actually erected on what would be considered uh, fouled ground because the blood of, 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 by, by mosaic law, by Hebraic law, unclean animals, it, it saturated that ground. And of course that's where the actual building was, was built. It was donated by the Rockefellers. Most of our listeners know this. And then of course there's the entire Lucian trust story. So, so you can make a strong argument that the United Nations was founded with a significant Luciferian component from the Rockefellers land oh, donation to the funds that came through Lucian trust and to many of the characters, uh, that the United Nations has supported who and clearly you, are you not just said it, John, the, the, uh, just, if you look at their, the United Nations own spiritual outlook and motivation, it is demonic. I mean, there's, there's no way around it. Look at, you know, the, who was writing for them, the Lucius trust and the, uh, uh, you know, there, if you ever read those documents about the triangles and the, all this new age, uh, basically all it boils down to is demonic, uh, the satanic, uh, religion. That's all it is. And yep. this is their main foundation at the right. UN. Okay. So, so you just, you just segued beautifully to, for me to kind of throw this argument on the table and we'll sort of, we'll sort of parse through it, Joe. The argument goes, because of how you and I just mapped it out, myself historically, you from a more political, spiritual side, the UN was founded in, 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 a, in unclean blood, to use a metaphor. Okay, so the UN mandated, after picking up on the, on the historic Balfour, Balfour Declaration and the Palestinian mandate, the UN then turned around in 47, and most people contextualize it as a as a, a global embracing of the Jews post Holocaust, that we would give them part of the, the Palestinian mandate of British Palestine for the modern state of Israel. And of course it regionally matches to a much lesser extent, traditional biblical Israel. But there's many among us, Joe, and I'm not gonna name names specifically, not gonna name names, but very prominent people among us believe that the modern state of Israel is not the biblical conclusion of prophecy uh, as deemed by the Lord God Almighty because right. it was the Luciferian United Nations that facilitated the machinations that placed all of this in in motion and I've thought I've, I've thought about that before too John I've, I've looked at it from that angle but just like throughout history just like with our own country things and just as we see today more so now than ever things that God has established for his purposes and for his good have been used by Satan and you know everything we see now from uh, just little things like marriage between they're trying to erase gender roles and erase traditional marriage everything that was established for for good we see it being turned over to to evil and there's no difference when it comes to uh this as well and we're talking also not only about the historical claim to the land of israel but you have the other component the human component of governments and and powers and we know satan is the is the power of this world and uh he has and wields that influence over governments and peoples in those governments and it is no different i mean i i'm sure it is prophetic it is Israel is a timepiece of, of the Lord. And the Bible clearly says that when the Gentiles uh, time is full, that, you know, he will turn to his people 
and those they will be saved and whatnot. So we are in those times. I have no doubt about it. And the timing of this to see 70 years to the day was no doubt calculated by not only Israel, I'm sure, but also the Trump administration. And it is very prophetic, I'd say. But to the uh, real quick, John, the, the arguments about people in Gaza and, and the protesters versus uh, Israel killing them. There's two arguments that are being made here. Some people are saying, oh, you know, Israel's murdering innocent uh, men and, and teenagers. At the same time, they're not, you know, running around um, massacring people. They're defending a border. One, also, we know that the terrorists, the some of these protesters in Gaza and Al-Qaeda overall, Islam in general likes to use younger kids to carry out terror attacks. And, I mean, I don't know. There's two sides of this argument. Are, is Israel just right out massacring people? No. Uh, should they use this much force? I, I don't know. There's 40 plus dead, 2,000 injured. I'm not there. I don't have a good idea of what's going on there except uh, from what reports we're getting and what visuals we're seeing. But uh, there's a lot of gray here. It's not just one way or the other. Uh, well, we can draw from history from even recent history. Israel has a a long history of hitting fast and hard and often preemptively. And they've done that going all the way back to 1967 when they destroyed the Egyptian Air Force while those planes were still on, on the ground. So you could argue that even at that time, those were combat combat assets, yes, but they weren't even in the air. Uh, nonetheless, they were destroyed on the ground, and that's in, in part why, why Israel was able to prevail in that war. Uh, but there's two, we have two lines of dialogue running here, and I want to try to, try to uh, comment on both. First, uh, the the United Nations uh, formation of the modern state of Israel, God will use, and, and this gets into some really tricky ground here. And, I, and I'm thinking that, that that this week I'd like to get try to get Bill Salas to join us, and I'd like to try to maybe get Pastor Mike Spalding to join us as well, and get get their perspectives on this. But we know from the Book of Job that Satan, and this is one of his primary six characteristics, and I'm going to speak about two of them right now. I'm going to speak about being the accuser of the brethren and also the and also the master counterfeiter. So as his role as accuser of the brethren, we know that Satan himself stood before God and, and, and they determined Satan was goading and trying to bait God. And, and, and unfortunately for Job, uh, he was the person used to demonstrate God's sovereignty and to demonstrate ultimate faith in God as, as dictated by the Holy Spirit. And so going all the way back to the book of Job, the, a book I might add that many theologians believe may be the oldest book in the Bible, but that's a whole different debate for another time. We know that Satan is the accuser of the brethren. So if God if God has this, this, uh, this ongoing dialogue with Satan, who's an accuser of the brethren, then God can certainly use Satan's attempts his 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 whims and wiles and his evil to God's own greater purpose. Uh, God has used men and women throughout history, going all the way back to Rahab, who were not upstanding people. Uh, she was a harlot, but she she by her obedience saved uh, saved her people. <clears throat> That's just one example. So. I disregard the the notion that because the UN was set up through these Luciferian machinations that 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 uh, discounts or discredits the modern state of Israel. So that's point number one. Point number two is the concept of Satan as the master counterfeiter, and we see this all through what's going on right now because Islam has no rightful claim to Jerusalem. It, as you said, it was it was a, it was established by conquest and through murder. And over 600 years after Jesus Christ's earthly ministry. So it is a counterfeit. It has no place at the table. And that's an incredibly unpopular argument with globalists and with a lot of the liberal uh, prosperity and um, and uh, progressive theology of the American church. It's very unpopular, but it's true. Islam is the last person to the party, so to speak. They have no rightful claim on Jerusalem whatsoever. But interestingly... This is another very unpopular thing to say, Joe. There's no such thing in 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 uh, like ethnocentric definition as Palestinians. The whole concept of Palestine was created in the post Ottoman Empire after Turkey relinquished all of the the land that made the Ottoman Empire uh, it, it, right after World War One. 
Palestine is is a basically a British geopolitical creation. So people who call themselves Palestinians are operating uh, from a, a a history that's less than 100 years old. There are legitimate Saudi Arabians, or there are legitimate Jordanians or Egyptians. I mean, look at Egypt. You can track that all the way back to the beginning of the Bible, but you can't find Palestine in the Bible anywhere because Palestine didn't exist, Joe, until post World War One. So we see in operation today, we see Satan as the accuser of the brethren and, and, and uh, in implementing divide and conquer strategies, even as we witness this historic moment today. But we also see Satan as the master counterfeiter, uh, uh, deceiving the world to believe that that Islam has any rightful claim to Jerusalem whatsoever. They do not. A additionally, even in the remarks of John Hagee today, uh, in Jerusalem, he it was interesting because we heard from Jared Kushner, who represented the the uh, well, I want to be careful. I say this. he represented the White House, but he also represented many believe uh, the the establishment Israeli deep state. I don't really have a strong opinion on that, Joe, but many people believe that Jared Kushner does represent that. Yeah. But then we then we heard from Netanyahu. We don't need to really go over that at all. And then we heard from from Pastor John Hagee, who pastors the the big mega church in San Antonio. And I was very curious as Hagee stepped up to the dais if he would have the spiritual integrity to offer up his prayer in Jesus' name, not only Jesus Christ, who he has adopted his name as a Christian, but also as a pastor, as a leader, as a shepherd of the flock. And he balked, he dropped the ball. And I, I'm not a big John Hagee fan anyway, but he he prayed to the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and he made it a very friendly Jewish-centric prayer, but he did not conclude such a profound, prominent moment as the rep, as the single representative of the entire American evangelical community, he did not conclude the prayer in Jesus' name, nor did he acknowledge Jesus Christ in the prayer. But what he did say in his remarks is that throughout Jerusalem, uh, the, these three great religions worship, and he gave full latitude to Islam, and and you could you could infer by his implication that he was that he himself was giving authority to or lending lending his um, credibility to the idea that Islam worships the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He said in his own words, he, he called out three churches. He called out an Islamic mosque, he called out a synagogue, and he called out a, um, a, uh, a Christian church. And if you go back and listen to John Hagee's remarks, Joe, there is, unfortunately, unfortunately, within his remarks, satanic counterfeit uh, concepts. Number one, Islam does not worship the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That's counterfeit concept number one. Number two, John Hagee, through combining, just through a couple of sentences, Islam, Judaism, and Christianity under the 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 um, the communal Jerusalem-centric remarks that he made, he's actually laying down concrete uh, uh, infrastructure for the things that Mike Gendron talked about uh, a week ago today on our show which is the emergence of this big, peace-loving, shalom, one-world uh, religion that is colloquially called Chris Long. Yeah, and it is, uh, it's amazing to see, John, as you were talking uh, about what Hagee was doing there and Jared Kushner, yes, and, and you're, you're right, he does, uh, he does have the deep state global elite type uh, interest with Israel. You know, don't forget, he... Um, is friends with George Soros. So uh, we don't, anybody who has a friend like George Soros, we don't even need to know really any more about him because, you know, if you're associating and. and He's uh, friends with Soros? Yes, yes. Oh boy. Now, 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 okay. Now, old Johnny Robertson here just got sent to school because, Joe, I did not know that. Please continue. Well, uh, you know, we can spend more time in another day talking about Jared Kushner and his affiliations, but. Um, yeah, it, there's an article up on Hagman Report, and it originates from the Free Beacon. Trump administration readying Israeli-Palestinian peace plan. The United States in the late phases of finalizing its Israeli-Palestinian peace plan that will be presented to both parties for consideration, according to a senior White House official who discussed uh, progress on the matter ahead of massive cel celebrations in Israel to open the new U.S. embassy in Jerusalem. Anyway... 
the president presidential delegation uh, is also there on top of what they're doing with the embassy to uh, continue to lay out and present an historic step towards this peace plan and trying to finalize with a two-state solution. And this is the other part of this, John, that is so interesting and absolutely prophetic is if they iron out some sort of peace agreement. I mean... Well, if you listen to Netanyahu, Kushner, and Hagee's remarks today, Joe, they certainly uh, foreshadowed or laid down what we would call the setup for the payoff that you just intimated. Uh, Again, it's it's hard to digest or comprehend how historic this action today because because words we're words that have been that have been uttered by presidents going back to bill clinton but i actually think it goes back to richard nixon if you track it fully came to fruition today words became action today and yet i have this weird feeling inside joe that 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 today is the beginning of what could what could be fast and furious uh, moments in the prophetic timeline, and and I'm and I'm and I'm 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 humbled and stupefied and gobsmacked that God, for whatever reason, in His divine wisdom, chose a couple of fellows like you and I to have the privilege of being on air for many hours today between the two of us, uh, and 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 to have discourse about such an unbelievable event. It's 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 it's. I mean, do you feel that way? It's it's mind boggling. It is mind boggling and it makes you wonder, you know, what's next and uh, how's this going to play out? And I guess we just take it one day at a time. But definitely, uh, again, the 70th anniversary, 70th year anniversary to the day that Israel was founded, its recognized capital of Jerusalem is now, uh, you know, basically officially its capital as the U.S. moved the embassy there. So historic day. And as you said, we talked about at the beginning of the show, what if anything, can we expect moving forward? There seems to be a, a heightened sense of alert as you have other na- Arab nations uh, you know, saying this is a illegal move, Al-Qaeda calling for attacks, Iran calling for you know resistance, on and on and on. So how many, if any, um, you know, incidents will this manifest uh, from from this decision we'll see what that blowback is today and throughout the rest of the week and we will be reporting on this of course tonight on hagman report as well but uh kind of switching gears here just to a few things i want to hit before uh, make sure we talk about there is some stuff up on hagman report and while we're talking about terrorism apparently in paris yesterday there was an attempted terror attack of a man who pledged his allegiance to ISIS, a Chechnyan-born attacker who fatally stabbed a man and injured four other people in Paris on Saturday night, uh, apparently pledged allegiance to the ISIS terror network in a video made before his death. Uh, this was video was obtained, I think this is from Fox News, uh, 20-year-old Asmoff called ISIS supporters living in West to immigrate to the group so-called Caliphate or else carry out attacks locally. They have closed the doors of immigration in our faces, so let's strike them in the center of their homes, the man said in French, adding, we are on the truth. Despite the alliance of all these unbelievers against us, they will not fulfill their goal. Anyway, the attack uh, in in France, in Paris, uh, is just the latest in a recent string of terror attacks and increased violence that has been the subject of many headlines uh, particularly with a knife and that's how this attacker carried out his attack by stabbing uh, five people killing one so that's something that's being overlooked john because of what's going on in israel and uh, other things that are going on but it's an important story to make note of because this is a continuing narrative that we see especially in europe uh, with this huge amount of migrants and, and Middle Eastern refugees being flooded into parts of Europe, it is turning it into, uh, you know, a terrorist haven and, and a places of violence that used to be, uh, you know, some of the most well-respected areas of our of our world. You know, Joe, you just uh, laid down a beautiful segue for for something you and I have discussed, and I'm sure we've thought about it uh, individually as well, quite a bit, in fact. What we're seeing in Western Europe, what we're seeing going all the way back to the late 1990s bombings of our embassies in Africa, but also even back to 1979 and the Iranian uh, taking of hostages and and takeover of our embassy in Tehran, uh, 
what is similar to what we're seeing in all of the major metropolitan areas in the United States, and it is this liberal, false, uh, half baked ideas and concepts and constantly. Um, OK, I want to I want to put this succinctly. Liberals are classic for creating a problem. Because their solution, their, their, what they consider solution oriented, I always think of as, oh my God, the house is on fire! Quick, dump some gasoline on it to put it out. Yeah. You know, and and it's like, wow, you know, they exacerbate everything with their solutions because their solutions are often a 180 degree departure of what we should actually do. And this isn't just a matter of different political concepts. This is a matter of worldview. Now, what do I mean by Western Europe, our embassies, and the inner cities, the major cities in America today, all of them suffer from the the liberal ideology that is that is uh, foisted on citizens and on innocent people. Whether it's people who were working in the Tehran embassy back in 1979 and they were essentially administrative clock punchers who were then chained to brick walls for a year and a half, or uh, African American, uh, Hispanic populations in these metropolitan areas like Los Angeles and 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 Austin and San Francisco and the list goes on and on, Milwaukee, Chicago, or the citizens of Western Europe, particularly in places like Sweden and Germany. At some point, Joe, these liberal concepts that that extend this this well monetized. A open arm hug. If we just be nice to these people, they're going to love us because, hey, it's love and it goes around and it comes around. And, and, and no, what happens is uh, what happens is scenes like the Charlie Hebdo massacre two years ago where unarmed police are being shot at by well-armed terrorists who practice the whole concept uh, of takia, which is the Islamic approval of lying or misleading infidels to ultimately uh to ultimately create the the caliphate the, 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 what what the what the what the muslim populace regards as as a utopia so so with american liberals in inner cities they're looking for a a marxist utopia that has never even come close to existing in the history of communism the, 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 the Muslims are looking for a Islamic utopia that they that they believe is the caliphate and the and the coming of the of the twelfth Mahdi and and uh, Islamification under Sharia law of the entire world. Both of these things, Joe, are fed like a massive furnace. They're fed by the erroneous 180 degree off the mark liberal ideologies that that consistently create the exact problems that they are purportedly designed to prevent. Yeah, and they do they do this uh, masterfully, John, like you said. Uh, and there's a piece, I'm trying to find it right now, up on Daily Caller. Uh, Dan Bongino, I think, is the uh, who they're talking about. Yeah, Dan Bongino says the Democrats are complete hypocrites uh, for obstructing Trump's agenda. But it also goes on there to talk about the how crazy that the left is. And, and we talked about it just even with the Iran deal we, or the uh, uh, Israeli Jerusalem uh, embassy move that past presidents said that they were going to do that. Past presidents, including Obama, said that they were going to recognize Jerusalem as the capital of Israel. But and, and the news media, uh, you know, celebrated that, promoted it uh, like it was a good thing. But now that it is President Trump who is the one that's doing it now it's obviously it's a bad thing and uh you know he's unhinged and <laughs> on and on and on but yeah these people are masterful at playing the victim they're masters at creating problems uh you know the, creating problems and then making government or uh you know the law get involved to uh you know squash their problems pretty much creating the dependency on government dependency on the the police state stuff it's absolutely insane and here's a good example john of this University hate crimes and bias allegations plummet after 400 security cameras are installed. This article from the Daily Caller uh, highlights a university in Massachusetts where it has seen its weekly rate of hate crime and bias reports plummet by 93% after the placement of 400 security cameras on campus. Now, the people who comment in, on this article 
are exactly right because the article goes on to say uh, that what we have seen is greater sense of unity uh, as such programs have resulted in productive discourse and conversation on important topics. And they go on to say, oh, this is more inclusive and we've become more unified because of the cameras. Even though all those reports of, of hate crimes were probably fake, these commenters uh, pointed out perfectly and here i'm just going to read a few of them a massachusetts university has seen its weekly rate of fake hate crimes and bias reports plummet by 93 percent after the placement of uh, security cameras and it goes on to say they were probably bogus and the students realized the cameras would prove them wrong but here's my favorite comment simple explanation cameras are now there to disprove allegations of hate crimes but the school spins it with a perfect example of orwellian newspeak our inclusivity and diversity training has turned our school into a paradise of tolerance and that's what the article is trying to say wow not even- that verbiage alone is creepy isn't it funny how they can take the fluffiest nicest sort of hallmark card type words and when they string them together with this evil communist agenda those words, all of a sudden, they backfire and they become creepy. Yeah, they do. And it's, uh, uh, I don't know, it's just a great example of the uh, you know hypocrisy on the left. But we see it everywhere. And with the political left, the political right, it is, uh, any of these establishment politicians, it is uh, absolutely mind-blowing that in the media what they're able to get away with. And it is, uh, it's so frustrating when we deal with it on a daily basis and, uh, you know, they, these people never are held accountable. They're never, uh, that hypocrisy is never shoved in their face and to where they say, oh yeah, I was wrong. Or it's always somebody else's fault. They're the perfect, they're professional victims is what they are. And it's, uh, it's just so again, frustrating to watch. And, uh, CNN on the back to the Israel real quick, CNN Fareed Zakaria frets over Trump, not defending or demanding concessions from Israel. There, at CNN are angry at President Trump about what he has done to the Palestinians by recognizing Jerusalem as the capital and had basically, uh, I'm sure, sure Stelter and all the rest of them are, are just droning on and on about how this is very bad and, uh, you know, this is uh, only going to help, uh, you know, line Trump's own pockets. That's their, right. their new thing. Right, because, because this is what they do, because this is what they do. I guarantee you, Stelter, and don't forget, that's my boy we're talking about, okay, because he tackles the tough issues, but he's going to start with a pro-Palestinian apologist attitude without doing his homework, without having the guts to go back in history and realize Stelter, Tapper, Lemon, that there was no such thing as Palestine. It was created Uh, The same as Saudi Arabia was created and many of the other countries in the region. Now, this is now 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 to be clear, Palestine was created post World War One. Saudi Arabia and many of the other uh, countries in the region were created post World War Two when and when uh, at Yalta uh, famously uh, Churchill, uh, Stalin and Roosevelt sat down with a. National Geographic magazine and carved out the East and West component. They effectively sat down like a couple guys at a poker table and they mapped out what would become the battle space of the entire Cold War with a National Geographic map. And so so a guy like Stelter will have this enormous empathy for the Palestinian people. There were 40 people killed today in Gaza. And don't get me wrong. I don't like seeing people people. Uh, uh, killed at the point of a gun anywhere but the whole thing is is a lie to begin with the palestinian people joe by ethnic heritage are jordanian egyptian lebanese uh you name it they they, they are a they're a, a, an ethnic smattering of all different arab ethnicities that then call themselves palestinians and that's one of the reasons that Palestine and the whole PLO operation are allowed into the United Nations with observer status rather than sovereign state status because nobody who knows the last hundred years of history can argue with any merit whatsoever the existence of this phony baloney state called Palestine. Yeah, and it you know this uh I was look I forget which guest it was last week on our show was on, but I was looking through historical maps of the middle east and from you know the 
70 AD until today, how the landscape and how the power. Yeah, did you changed. find Palestine on there? <laughs> no, but you see, I mean, like it goes through the the uh, the Arab infiltration of pretty much most of Europe that during the uh, the conquest or whatever, and and then it sh- it just shows the power shifts and how the uh, different regions, you know, from uh the ottoman empire to all the way back before that the conquerors and whatnot how many times the, those lands have changed hands and changed rulers it's really uh, fascinating to see that uh, and there's interactive maps you can find online i forget where i was looking because they, they had this whole big page of all these different maps that you clicked on and it would go through the progressions of of how uh the land changed hands over the years Joe, and it was really good got to find that link so our listeners myself included can access that that sounds yeah. like a it's in really my cool history. Tool. I'll be able to find it. Yeah, that That's sounds me. great. And the, the last thing I want to say about uh, about the whole Palestinian issue, and, and then I'm going to hand it back to you because I, I, I think we should probably cover some other news. Uh, but wars, particularly world wars, have enormous consequences. And I would encourage all of our listeners, take a moment this week, like Joe just suggested, and, and Joe, definitely for tomorrow, please find that that link and we'll put it in the show notes. Uh, so that so that we can all benefit from that tool. But after World War I, we saw the dissolution of familial absolute monarchies across both East and Western Europe. We saw the dissolution of Tsarist Russia. We saw the dissolution of the Ottoman Empire. We saw the entire creation of the Balkans uh, state by state. We saw uh, we saw the this this notion of Palestine that was that was that was actually British Palestine and the Palestinian mandate. That's where this whole concept of Palestine first surfaced. And then post World War II, the same thing. And and our listeners can can do a little thirty minutes of homework on this, and you'll be much 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 better equipped to comprehend a lot of what Joe and I talk about because we're not a couple of genius guys here. What gives us a, 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 an edge or a perspective to do this show every day is that both of us read a lot and both of us really enjoy history, but perhaps even more so than enjoying it, we understand that you can't possibly understand where we are today until you have a reasonable grasp of where we were yesterday. And that's a huge, uh, that's, that's, it's interesting because Doug Hagman, Joe Hagman, and myself are, are profoundly unique individuals the three of us have some things in common but we're very different people but one thing joe i'm sure you can agree with is the one thing that we all three share in common and we use it i think to great effect is we all three read a lot and we love history yeah we do and that's uh it's so important uh just like you john i can spend a whole day watching uh, old world war ii footage or or some historical documentary on youtube that's in- interesting and absolutely uh you know it's fascinating if we don't know our history we're doomed to repeat those same mistakes in the future it's one of the the more famous quotes about history and it's so important that we understand you know where we came from and, and why things are happening the way they are you need that historical context to be able to analyze things properly and it is uh it, to me it, it was one of my favorite subjects in school and it was uh uh, you know, I'm, I have a good mind for memorization of things like that. Not so much math, but, you know, historical uh, indexing in my mind. So uh, th- that much is, uh, at least it correlates with my intellectual ability. Again, not so much like math. I can't do math too well, but I can, I can uh, remember a whole bunch of uh, details. So anyway, um, but in the last, I don't know what we got, about 15 minutes left, John. I want to make sure we covered this kind of a off the radar type story. But it is important because this also highlights other battles that we're, we go through uh, at the Hagman Report. This is from Newsbusters.org. Who's the snowflake now? Michael Avenatti threatens to sue Daily Caller for defamation. On Monday morning, Stormy Daniels' attorney, provocateur, and frequent liberal news guest, Michael Avenetti, threatened to sue friends at the Daily Caller, stating in an email that he could... Move to sue each of you and your publication for hit pieces that are full of lies and defamatory statements. His email came in less than 12 hours after a Sunday night piece by associate editor Peter Hassan and media reporter Joe Simpson entitled, With Avenatti the spotlight, in the spotlight, his own questionable past emerges. In the article, the pair exposed his past having been littered with lawsuits, jittered, jilted businesses, and partners' bankruptcy filings. 
and they have the article there. But Avenatti sent an email this morning to one of the reporters with a subject line, cut it out, and also tried to claim that the conversation that he wrote in the email was off the record. And it goes on to, to basically they're trying to bully the journalist to pull down a piece that they published. Let me be clear. If you and your colleagues do not stop with hit pieces that are full of lies and defamatory statements, I will have no choice but to sue each of you and your publication for defamation. I will expose your publication for what it truly is and recover significant damages against each of you that participated personally. So if I were you, I would tell Mr. Trump to find someone else to fabricate things about me if you think I'm kidding. You really don't know anything about me. This is the last warning. But interestingly enough, there's no evidence that Mr. Trump is the source of the Daily Caller's article. And they're only reporting things that they've found through historical records. So is this is just a great example of how lawfare is used in the field of reporting and journalism for people who don't like what's being reported about them or uh, whatever it is to, to try to bully them to keep it out of the papers. I mean... You get a, a piece about you, yeah, if you want to defend yourself, you threaten a lawsuit and whatnot, but these tactics are being weaponized to bring about frivolous lawsuits to keep people tied up in litigation and uh, having to spend money on legal costs and lawyers. And this is a very effective technique in uh, attempting to uh, you know, discredit and bring down the alternative media. But at the same time, anybody who brings these lawsuits opens themselves up to litigation if it is frivolous and it can prove it can be proven so it is a two-edged sword unfortunately it's much more uh, on the left being used by the left than it is on the right i don't know anybody who you know in the alternative media who has lawsuits against uh, other reporters or anything like that it's the hmm. leeches of the world who do stuff like that unless there is really damages you can prove which is very hard especially uh you know you know what I mean? It's yeah, that, it's the cat that, and mouse game being that email sounds like tactics. bluster. It's a lot of it sounds like bluster. It sounds hyper self defensive, and if you know if you don't think I'm serious, then you don't know me. I mean, it kind of sounds like you know barroom rhetoric before the chairs start flying. You know, um, but but Joe, let's consider lawfare from another angle because you just made an excellent point. It the courts you use the word weaponized, and you couldn't have picked a more perfect word. The courts. Have been weaponized. Now, I want to offer this from a different perspective, but Joe, I'm going to hand it back to you to tie it up. This is from the SunSentinel.com, and it's really the only story that I really wanted to make sure I got out today. This is written by David Fleshler, again, SunSentinel.com. School district shuts down information after Stoneman Douglas shooting. I'll just give listeners the first piece. The Broward School District's repeated, emphatic, and as it turns out, false statements that Nicholas Cruz. Had not the shooter, for those who don't remember, Nicholas Cruz, had not been in a controversial disciplinary program, fit a pattern of an institution on the defensive and under siege. Facing significant legal and political exposure over the shooting at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School, the district has tried to keep information from the public and put out untrue and misleading statements, frustrating parents who say that this is the time for maximum transparency. Here's where we go into the lawfare. The district is fighting in court against the release of school surveillance video. It flatly refused to issue any records regarding the shooting to the news media in a possible violation of the state's open records law. Superintendent Robert Runcie has blocked critics, including parents, from his Twitter account. More than two months after the shooting, a Broward Sheriff's detective told a state commission on school safety that he was still waiting for the district to provide all of Cruz's disciplinary records. And to reiterate, Joe, the 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 uh, superintendent and the school system are fighting in court to keep what I think we can all agree is pretty significant information that cost a bunch of innocent kids their lives. They don't want it to see the light of day. Again, Joe, weaponizing the court system, and it's not for the greater good. No, it, it's not. And uh what will will he end up filing suit, and uh, how will this go? The lawyer or uh, lawyers, the reporters today, uh, especially in the alternative media and on the right, are facing these huge battles from censorship in Europe to hate speech laws and censorship across the board in Europe, hate speech laws, and in Canada, where you can't even tell the truth. The truth, telling the truth in a way that it offends somebody in Europe, can literally get you locked up in prison. It's absolutely mind-boggling how far uh, away from 
uh, any sense of, of semblance of a republic or democracy or uh, anything normal. We've gone into just this insanity mindset where now we're involving the legal system and from lawfare to to laws trying to silence and oppress the opposition. It's absolutely crazy, which brings us to another story. I want to make sure people get a chance to read on Hagman Report. It is uh, how Obama loyalists conspired to undermine the Trump administration. Now, there's nothing new here. We uh, have talked about this in the past at length. Republican-driven investigative reports on Russia have provided an unanticipated view into secret anti-Trump maneuvers by Obama loyalists during the span of the presidential transition. Congress set out in early 2017 to investigate Moscow election interference and any coordination with the Donald Trump campaign. As the collusion avenues led to dead ends, Republican investigators for the House Permanent Select Committee on Intelligence and the Senate Judiciary Committee traveled on a new lane. They discovered a number of behind-the-scenes moves that they had transformed a traditionally uh, acrimony-free transition into a partisan transfer of presidential power. Among the findings... Obama appointees relied on Democratic opposition research to push Trump collusion claims into the public domain. They also leaked sensitive materials to news media, some of it grossly misleading. In addition, House Intelligence Committee Chair Devin Nunez is seeking to access Justice Department documents to determine whether the FBI inserted a spy into the Trump campaign. Now, this was a piece that that just had come out over the last few days. And there is a reporter, she was on Laura Ingram this morning, I gotta get her name, but she's saying that it is very possible that there was a mole in President Trump, I guess what you say, campaign and uh, transition team that worked for the FBI. Did the FBI plant a mole inside Trump campaign? Ron DeSantis thinks he may know who was the mole. There needs to be a follow-up, he says. Republican Representative Ron DeSantis of Florida thinks he may know who was spying on the president campaign uh, and transition team. Rumors of an FBI mole planted within the campaign have surfaced, and DeSantis, a Florida gubernatorial candidate, believes the accusations have merit. Now, there is also the reason that they're talking about this, why they believe there was a mole of the FBI inside the Trump campaign is because of the Department of Justice's refusal to release certain documents that Congress, specifically Devin Nunez and the House Intelligence Committee, have been calling for unredacted. And he has threatened to put Jeff Sessions in contempt of Congress because he still has not received these documents. And he believes the information in those documents will show that there was some kind of coordination with an FBI informant in the campaign. So if that's true, this adds another brick to the whole building of this, I guess you call it deep state corruption in an attempt to sabotage President Donald Trump. It's absolutely unprecedented, the level of corruption that we have against an elected president, President Trump, in his campaign and into his transition, and even after his inauguration, weaponizing law enforcement agencies against a sitting president, and doing so all in, as part of a big grand conspiracy, criminal conspiracy. It's absolutely unprecedented, as I said. And the biggest question is, who will be held accountable? There's a lot of people who are involved in this. Will they be held accountable? That is wow. the real question. That and thank you for capping it off like that, Joe. Not to be, not to let it slip through the cracks that they that you just read that it's being discussed. There's open public dialogue about holding Attorney General Jeff Sessions in contempt of Congress. This would be the second Attorney General of the United States in a row if that happened. Listeners, what's it going to take to realize that we've got corruption from top to bottom, bottom to top in the Department of Justice? I am not. Uh, judge, jury, and executioner for Attorney General Jeff Sessions, but we've all been asking ourselves for a year now, where is he? He's fighting state marijuana laws and doing other things. <laughs> yeah, and I, uh, John, I was just looking at an updated uh, story here on Drudge, up to 52 now reported dead in Palestinian protests and 2,400 injured. Uh, that's uh, an updated number, and I'm sure it's going to continue to rise as the uh, tensions between the these uh, 
uh, two sides are continuing to grow. And I'm looking at through the pictures here of what we're seeing of these protesters being carried out on stretchers. And uh, the, it's um, it's amazing to see here. There, it's uh, basically a desert landscape. There's no bushes. There's no trees. It's just light brown tan dirt. And you see just thousands and thousands of, of people some with with guns, some with rocks, uh, all you know, wrapped up, um, rioting. I guess you'd say, and there is a lot, and they're throwing rocks, and 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 they're being met with with force. And what from what I am understanding from these, uh, looking at this and seeing, reading these reports, apparently many of them are trying to storm a uh, border fence, and this is where the the shooting is coming in because you have people attempting to put bombs and light fires and. Uh, get that that fence uh, border knocked down so they can in mass uh, you know storm the idf but a lot of death over there uh, today john and that's not as you said i mean how can you really celebrate when you have this level of life loss going on to be very clear we do not appreciate or celebrate 52 dead quote-unquote palestinians and you know, we, we need to re, we need to be mindful, listeners, that a lot of these people have grown up in what would be considered a multi generational deception grid. A lot of the you know, 13, 14, 15, 16 year olds that are over there throwing a rock and then getting shot with a 762, uh, they really, truly, firmly believe that they are a displaced Palestinian people because they're they are much like much like millennials in this country. They're a generation that's been lied to all their lives by a generation that was lied to all of their lives. Very well said, John. And uh, looking at the clock here, I just want to see how much time we have left. Uh, just a few minutes. So I want to just make a few quick announcements. One, we uh, are in the planning stages of doing a, a relaunch of this show under a different name, under a different platform. So I just want to let listeners know we have Eric and John uh, have been brainstorming along with myself, putting together some great ideas to to really uh, kick this show into high gear and uh, get as many people listening to it as possible. And any suggestions people have who are listeners of the show of things we should talk about or things you'd like to see in the future, you can email to us at studio at Hagman and Hagman dot com. And we would uh, really appreciate that. But we're, uh, you know, again, in the planning stages, talking this out. <laughs> hey, do you think what's the best we'll, way will gary email us are we going to get some emails gary oh maybe hopefully i hopefully. haven't heard from from him in a while and then uh the second announcement i wanted to make was our sponsor simply clean foods.net they are the sponsor of the hagman daily show and they have great survival storable food that is uh, very tasty gmo free it is made uh, with one ingredient it's very fresh very flavorful everything i've tried from the strawberries to their new uh, pineapples their blueberries cauliflower everything else simply clean don't, don't forget the bananas. bananas bananas are good yeah i that's one that's what i'm going to try next i'm going to ask chance to send us a uh some sample packs of those bananas john cuz uh, it, he's right. Putting them on some ice cream or sticking them in cereal, it is just like having regular bananas. And these things uh, have a shelf life that lasts years, years and years and years, especially if they're not open. I think it's 20 years. So make sure you go to simplycleanfoods.net, use promo code SIMPLYCLEAN, and get your survival storable foods there and all kinds of other supplies from uh, I mean, they got everything the water filtration straws, the uh, all the gear that they have. They were sponsoring the occupy conference that we just went to in april and they had a whole table full of uh, gear from knives to just any and everything you might need in your prepping or you know if you're a, an outdoorsman go there and check out what they got you might find some it's high some quality deals. too they've yeah. got gerber and and um and kershaw and some really quality brands absolutely right well we are out of time we will be back on having the report tonight and back here tomorrow The Hagman Daily Show is brought to you by The Hagman Report. Tune in to The Hagman Report weekdays, 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern Time. For more information, go to HagmanReport.com. That's HagmanReport.com.